<laughs> All right. Um, cool horse girl, welcome to Dow Talk. Thanks so much for joining us. Yeah, thanks so much for having me. I'm, I'm stoked to be here. Hell yeah. So would love if you could just get us started by telling us a little bit more about um, your background, how you got started working in crypto and DAOs and what you're working on now. For sure. So um, right now I'm the content manager at Index Coup. Um, we're a DAO that powers, launches, and maintains uh, structured DeFi products and strategy tokens. So what I do is like I write for our blog, I do a bit of PR, and then I manage like internal and external communications, including all of our research. Um, so with that said, my background is you know fairly in in research. So I spent all my summers um, of university um, and all my falls after. Uh, traveling around the world, conducting research um, in a bunch of countries. So that was cool. The last piece that I wrote before I got started full-time in crypto um, was on the relationship between mobile money and personal autonomy in East Africa. And I think the insights that I gained from that research, um, like studying that topic specifically, is sort of what drove me to do full-time crypto. Um, and then yeah, with that, like I have an undergraduate in philosophy and a master's in business. Um, and I think those two together really uh, drove me towards crypto as well. The ethos of decentralization is something that I believe in uh, massively. And then I also got definitely some help understanding the technicals um, from my business degree. But with all that said, one of my favorite parts about crypto is that you don't have to have either degree. Um, you don't have to have any degree uh, to get started like participating in the space. It's definitely like a learn by doing thing. Um, yeah, I guess speaking of learning by doing, uh, I heard about crypto when I was in high school and I was at a model United Nations conference and was doing a bit of research on it, uh, you know, like learning what is Bitcoin. Um, then with what is Bitcoin, I learned you could use Bitcoin to buy a fake ID. Um, and that's how I got started with it. I think whether people want to admit it or not, uh, that's how a lot of people in the space got started with it. Um, so I didn't buy just enough uh, for a fake ID um, because I thought it was a cool concept. <laughs> um, so that got me really lucky um, when Bitcoin went way up in 2017. Of course, like I'm realizing how how lucky I got. And I think that gave me some loyalty to crypto um, and also a reason to sort of justify my luck in a way. So I'm reading up on Ethereum, uh, got interested in mining, buying a mining computer. You know, you go down the rabbit hole and it like all goes so, so quickly. Um, and then finally, yeah, I got interested in DAOs after I finished up my master's um, and I'd gotten rejected by the, you know, like the crypto VC space. So I'm like, I think I need something slightly more degen. Um, I started reading up on Twitter um, and landed at Index Coop, which I heard back then was the best DAO. Um, and to be fair, I still, I really do believe it. <laughs> awesome. So much to dig into there. Wow. Yeah. Wow. That's what's <laughs> um, Yeah. No, like I've had this conversation with a few people where it's like, you know, one of the really important things to understand about the crypto space and that, that I think heavily influences why it is the way it is now is like, um, a lot of the people that got in early were, um, interested in illegal activity. So <laughs> yeah, I was going to say the fake ID is really the, the very top of the tip of the iceberg, if you will, of crypto yeah. use cases in 2011. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Not, not that like, not, not, not that anyone did any illegal activity, just like, no. you know, they, they were, they were, they're interested, interested in intellectually. Purposes. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, uh, but yeah, um, that's really cool. I, I, when I graduated from, uh, from uni, I like kind of went through a similar process. I, I like, I graduated from business school and like the cool thing to do at that time, which is hilarious in retrospect was work for some kind of like consulting organization or investment bank. And I just like, yeah, I was too degen for them. Um, and I ended up working, working at Google, which like sounds not degen at all now, but like at that time it was like still at least okay. vaguely edgy. Uh, like to that's work there, and so they like. I'm thinking that's the most corporate job. <laughs> yeah, in it, 
early on, Google was actually super edgy. Um, I, I kind of sure. arrived there when they were transitioning into like full corpo mode. Um, <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, they, they like got me and I was like, okay, like I can tell this interview is like resonating more <laughs> with these yeah, people. Once so. you find it, you really find it. I found, I was just having unlock after unlock after unlock. And then it was just so easy and that's how it should be. It's easy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You got to find your people. It's not just about, you know, getting through a job process, right? It's about like finding the people that, yeah, you resonate with. Yeah. Cool. Well, um, would love to dig into what you're working on now a little bit more than um, I have also heard really good things about index coop as a DAO, like just in terms of the level of coordination uh, in the community and the amount of work that gets done. Um, so we'd love to hear more about your perspective on index coop and, and yeah, what you're focused on specifically. For sure. Um, so maybe we'll give a bit of background on index coop as it is. So we're almost two years old. I think our birthday is October 6th, which we're having a whole campaign celebration for it. I actually feel more excited for index coops birthday than like my own these days. Um, <laughs> so it's actually an accomplishment to gain years, you know, um, but first and foremost, uh, index coop is a DAO. I think when I was first trying to sort of figure out what to do in the crypto space, I wanted something like, like we just said, like I wanted something degen. I wanted something flexible. Um, and index coop really does stand by those like values of a DAO. Um, so we're not just, you know, like a social DAO or one of Koopa Troopa's many other, uh, types of DAOs, but we're a protocol DAO. Um, so we power, launch and maintain uh, structured DeFi products, right? Um, and strategy tokens. So a really cool part of that is that you can wrap really high level strategies into one token um, that doesn't require active ma management. Um, I like Index Coop a lot because we make digital asset products that you can use to like onboard your grandmother into crypto. Um, but we also make ones that like, I don't even fully understand, like ones that I think a really high level experienced trader um, would want to use. Um, so yeah, as of last August, um, we supported 79.3% of on-chain crypto structured product TBL, which I think um, that fact is so ingrained in my mind because I'm so proud of it. <laughs> um, but um yeah, so I got started at IndexCoop literally by just joining the Discord. Um, like we just talked about, finding a job is like difficult right outside of right outside of uni um, when you don't necessarily have the corpo experience um, for the finance game, you know. Um, so I joined a Discord, very Dijon way of uh, job acquisition, I think, and just started talking to people. Um, also, like what we said, I feel like I found my people at Index Coop. I do think lots of DAOs have different vibes. Um, and I talked to a few DAOs, like namely uh, Forefront and Bankless, uh, which I also really respect. Um, but I think I found my people at Index Coop, which is cool. Um, and you know, it's a great feeling when your coworkers really do feel like your friends, even when you haven't met them, you know? Um, so yeah, join the Discord kind of gained a mentor um, in my friend and colleague, uh, Kind Eagle. Um, and the first thing I did was write the scoop. So the scoop was our daily sort of newsletter write-up of every meeting that happened that day. Um, and this kind of, kind of fueled my like belief, uh, my bullishness on DAOs, because it was crazy to me that I would write up like meeting notes for the whole day. Um, and they just go public. Um, I mean, what other company or organization that's shipping products is willing to be that, that transparent, um, where they'll write up literally every meeting note, record every meeting, publish it. Like imagine like Google doing that, you know? Um, so yeah, I thought that was really cool. And from there, I think I got deeper and deeper into content and now I'm like the lead writer, content manager of our blog and our white papers, which is, I'm so happy. Best job ever. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. Um, one sec. I'm going to like, my wife is like filling up a bath. 
<laughs> and it's it's kind of loud. I think <laughs> like that's the sound bite we take. Yeah, that's the short. Um, yeah. We'll we'll splice that with like the um the the tax talk. <laughs> Um, (laughs) yeah okay cool um no no that that, that's amazing um like love that you found your way uh into like into your team and your role by joining a discord that's like definitely speaks highly of the onboarding process at at index coop like it i think that's kind of what we're all going for is like you can come in from the outside and like contribute at value, find your home, but sometimes that's harder to do than like it sounds on paper. Um, so we'd love to learn a little bit about that, like both from your perspective of being on board, onboarded into index hoop. And then I'm sure you've been like involved in onboarding other people since. Um, so what, like kind of what does index hoop do well there that kind of allows people to become contributors? Um, yeah, just so- somewhat, you know, permissionlessly. Yeah, for sure. I think that's a great question in the space of DAOs. Um, when I thought about like things I would want to change about Web3 or, you know, DAOs of the space, um, it's like clear expectations. Um, I feel like Web3 is great in that it offers so much like permissionlessness and anybody can really participate in anything they want. But I think because of the lack of permissions, it creates um, some sort of toxicity where you can be doing full on work, a full-time job and getting paid nothing or little, um, you know, just getting exploited overall. Um, and index Coop definitely doesn't do that, which is great. I think when I got onboarded, um, which was maybe like 11 months ago about, um, they had a kind of a program, which was cool. It was like, bronze owl, silver owl, gold owl. And you kind of rose through the ranks. It was fun because I felt like I was in kindergarten again. You know, I'm thinking all these like intense business jobs I would go for where they have, you know, this junior associate. Blah, blah, blah. And this one, I'm like, should I put like bronze owl on my LinkedIn? You know, <laughs> um, but it was cool. So as soon as I joined index, they had sort of a structured plan of how you get onboarded. Um, and our discord is extremely active, which was nice. A lot of them, you kind of hop into and no one really responds to you. Ours, as soon as I hopped in, I got a mentor in Kind Eagle and he was like, this is what you have to do to um, kind of rise to the ranks, um, which is cool to get handheld just just a little bit. You know, I was quite lost, I will say. I didn't have Discord before um, I started doing all this DAO work, which I think says something. Um, but yeah, the clear expectations that Index Coop was very willingly and transparently handing out um, I think helped me get onboarded since then. Um, we've also been quite clear about that. We're no longer onboarding or pausing it at the moment, which I think is, it sounded tough at one point um, to kind of stomach because we're down and we're meant to be permissionless. Right. Um, but at the same time, I think there's a lot of DAOs that are not really open about that. They're not onboarding. So it's sort of a, yeah, we're permissionless. Come join us. Work for free, you know? Um, and Index Scoop definitely doesn't do that, which I can appreciate. Um, so we put a pause on all onboarding for now. Um, but that said, we do, like, obviously engage with our community constantly in the Discord. I think even though that's not really my technical job anymore, I still <laughs> enjoy it uh, quite a bit going on the Discord. It makes me feel, you know, like, I know what I'm talking about now. I was asking these same questions like a year ago. Um, and now I'm answering them, which is quite a crazy transition, but yeah, I think in all, I'd say transparency of onboarding is absolutely key to my, uh, longevity and loyalty to index coop and oppositely my lack thereof to other DAOs um, that make it a lot more difficult. Absolutely. I love that word transparency. Um, buzzword. I think, I, <laughs> yeah, word. yeah, I, I, I think. Um, setting clear expectations is actually key to uh, setting clear expectations and then um, executing on them in a transparent way is actually key to having any sort of permissionless work. Um, I've absolutely seen the scenario you described where it's like, Fallen victim to whether <laughs> whether the DAO yeah same um it, it's it's not clear whether the DAO is accepting new contributors or not um when really they're not and then 
people end up just like wasting time. And I, I don't think that's like more permissionless. I think that's just like a really poorly designed system <laughs> basically. I mean, um, so, so I, I think, um, that's really powerful, right? Like both when you, you kind of like happened upon index Coop at like a great time to become a contributor and they made it clear how to do that and you executed well and they executed well and you kind of ended up, you know, becoming a, you know, uh, um, a core contributor and finding your way in the space. But then on the flip side, now it's like, I, I think it's true of a lot of DAOs, right? Like we're, we're in a bear market, um, or just like, I mean, any business or organization, oh, okay. they're not yeah. growing, they're not growing in terms of contributors all the time. Right. And so making it clear mm -hmm. when you're not, and you're like, Hey, here's the ways you can still engage. Like we're looking for people to, you know, provide feedback on our products, ask questions, like, um, get Absolutely. involved in like, you know, just t tapping into the content we're producing. So there's still other ways to be like an open org. You can still publish your meeting notes. You can still make it clear to everyone what you're working on, um, without constantly onboarding new, you know, community members when it may not be sustainable to do so. So I think all of that actually speaks very well, like to, yeah, the, like it, it kind of makes sense, right? Why you're kind of able to find your way, um, in that index coop from the outside, uh, you know, so successfully. Yeah. I've thought about that a lot. Do you think that, um, permissionlessness and, um, like having these strict cutoffs, um, do you think they stand at odds? Like that's one thing I've kind of struggled with because when you think about it at surface level, I think, yes, everybody should be allowed to contribute. That's like the web three spirit. Um, do you have any thoughts or experience from tally on this? Yeah, it's a good question. Um, I will say I'm actually going to use this as an opportunity to segue into a discussion about content because um, you you talked about how you work on content. You also are part of Content Guild, which is sort of like Tally's we're, uh, DAO we're spinning out of Tally's marketing department. And I want to answer your question by talking about how we're starting to think about this at Content Guild. So um, I think like today, right? We, we were kind of, we're taking Tally's marketing department and trying to make it into a DAO over time. And so right now, actually funding content is really at the discretion of four Tally employees. Like it's, it's a DAO in the sense that it's like on chain and we do all the payments on chain and we put them as on chain proposals on Tally and then vote. And then it, you know, um, like trustlessly and autonomously executes the payment to the person who wrote the content. But it's not a DAO in, yet in the sense that, like, it's like Tally's employees, you know, are just deciding completely, <laughs> right? Like, DAO whether or not. Limits. I have learned that. <laughs> whether, yeah. whether or not to fund content. But, but I think, uh, and, and like, part of the reason for that right now is like, we have like it, you know, a finite budget, right? So it's kind of like similar to the situation you're describing with Index Hoop, where it's like, we, can, we, we can't just sort of like, randomly be like funding an unlimited amount of content. Like there has to be some sort of like, you have to be date. realistic. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And so, and I think that's true of any doubt, even one that is more, um, advanced in terms of decentralization than content guild is right now, there, there still has to be an ability to sort of like manage the deployment of resources on, on some level. Mm -hmm. And so the question is like, how do you do that in as permissionless or decentralized way as possible, or maybe another way to think about it is like, how do you create, you still create avenues for permissionless innovation uh, while, while having it be like sustainable. So one thing we actually talked about this morning is like uh, um, giving the ability for contributors to like vote over time. So there's, there's sort of like two paths to this. One is mm -hmm. like, folks like yourself who are taking a more active role in the DAO, right? Giving you voting power. So it's sort of like Tally is still a major stakeholder in the voting, but we're starting to bring right. in more people from the outside over time. The other thing we talked about is almost is creating like a sub DAO of the contributors of Content Guild. So we have like a two separate NFTs. One is for voting power and the other is basically just token gets the discord and we just give it to anyone who creates content um, for Tally. And we're talking about creating like a sub down that is just governed by the contributors and then giving the contributors the ability to delegate one voting NFT in like the actual like funding, you know, mechanism DAO. And so like this, 
the reason I bring this up is like, I think mechanisms like this can create ways for sort of like the community to bubble up uh, proposals and fund things. Like it's, 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 uh, it, it, it will be like possible to do this, like, like fully trustedly, <laughs> if you sort of sum those things up, right? Like the mm -hmm. fact that there's people from the community that have some direct voting power, then there's a sub DAO of contributors that together can sort of delegate towards voting power in the, in the DAO that has a treasury. Like I if you put idea. those things to, if you put those things together, you sort of get the ability for something to like happen completely permissionlessly, but it's like not necessarily like super easy. <laughs> um, yeah. um, and if, yeah. if, if it's, if it's super easy, like if it's like, I don't, I don't think you really want it to be easy, e even in like a more decentralized DAO, like nouns DAO, but let's use that mm -hmm. as an example ver versus content guild. Like, I don't think you want it to be like easy to get funding, <laughs> especially in crypto. Know. Like, like nouns DAO has a massive treasury, right? It's like, I don't know, tens, like yeah. high tens of millions of dollars right. in ETH. <laughs> I think like if you make it easy to just like somehow submit an on-chain proposal if you yeah. don't even own a noun right to get access to that treasury like that thing is going to get attacked so hard like yeah. you know um, we, we actually are we have we have a really small treasury um mm -hmm. in content guild and there's already been a couple of people attempting to raid the treasury and so like you you there's that balance like you want to create that mechanism but you don't want it to be just like anyone can come in and sort of just try yeah. to like take money. <laughs> um, so I, I think there's like a balance there, but you want to, you want to create like a mechanism for that for sure. Yeah. And an interesting part of web three is how I, how I just kind of mentioned it's easy for DAOs or organizations to exploit, um, you know, potential contributors, people who are confused on whether or not they'll get paid or you kind of blur the line. It's also somewhat easy for um, like potential contributors to scam um, DAOs into giving them money if it's that decentralized. You know, it's definitely a fine line to walk. It's that's a it's, I think it's part of like a broader conversation about DAOs versus like traditional businesses um, and this hard truth that like you have to be realistic. Um, you know. I don't know. I follow so much Twitter discourse on that. I think even when I, I've prepared for conversations like this before and I've like read through old tweets that I've liked, you know, kind of saying like, whose opinion can I kind of grab onto that I agree with? And I'll find like contradicting tweets that I've liked where some is like, you know, it needs to be more permissionless. This is ridiculous that um, you have to jump through all these hoops to contribute. Um, it's not Web3 like. And then I've also found ones that's like, you know, we just got scammed. What we were talking about last night um, about how somebody submitted just a proposal to send send random ETH um, <laughs> to their wallet. You know, um, it definitely goes both ways, which is a unique and maybe problem that'll be as this course goes on. Hopefully, it's solved more. Right? <laughs> yeah, I, th I think um, I think it's really about trying to design the system to attract the type of contributor that you want. So if it's so hard to come in from the outside and contribute, if it's too mm -hmm. hard, then you won't attract the type of contributor that you want, yeah. at which point, like, why do you even have a DAO, right? Um, there's, it's, it's, a, it's a bad design. But then if you design a system that is like very attractive to the type of contributor you don't want, that's just as bad. <laughs> you're just going to end up having to like unwind it um, because you're going to get attacked. You're going to be constantly mm -hmm. telling people no um, and stuff like that, uh, which, which puts up a bad vibe. So I think it's like, it's really about, it's, it's not like permissionless or not. It's like, you, like you, you definitely, I think it's a baseline. You need to make it possible to come in from the outside. Otherwise just don't do a DAO. Right. <laughs> right. Um, but it's like, how do you design it so that you kind of, it's, the the sort of like game theoretically like optimal behavior for a potential contributor is like doing what is actually good for the DAO. Yeah, I like that framing of like it's not about permissionlessness or not. It's about attracting the right type of contributor. I think that's something we've struggled with at Index over time. Um, somewhat recently in uh, late June, we had like a mass layoff situation because we just gotten extremely bloated. Um, and that's one thing I think looking back, we regret quite, 
quite deeply is that we let it get to that point, you know, but it's hard um, being a DAO. I think index has also been put on somewhat of like a pedestal um, as like a DAO that actually ships products. Um, you know, we don't want to be like a normal company. We want to bolster this DAO thing. Um, but at the end of the day, yeah, it just wasn't sustainable. Um, it's fine, fine, fine line to walk. <laughs> Absolutely. But that's what we're here for, right? Like, um, yeah, it's, <laughs> if it, if it was easy, um, DAOs would already be mainstream. <laughs> and, and so, um, we conversations matter. I feel like I get more clarity to some, to some small degree, you know, every time I have one of these debates, even if they disagree, probably more so if they disagree. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, um, thanks so much for, for that conversation. Like, um, I think, it was really interesting to learn from your experience with like Dow onboarding. Um, also, yeah, yeah uh, what you've been doing on the content side. So, um, really, uh, really appreciate your time. If it's if it's cool, um, would love to transition to um, some closing questions, which are uh, kind of like broad in nature. The first one is a two part question. So, the first part is, what's your favorite part of working in crypto slash DAOs? And the second part is, what's your least favorite or something you think we need to work on as a community? Okay, I'm prepared for the first one. The second one, I'm like, oh gosh, how deep do I want to go? Okay. Um, my favorite part is the flexibility. Um, I mean, I told you right at the beginning of this, you know, I'm in Vienna right now. Earlier today, I was in Budapest. I've lived in, like, lived, lived in five continents, um, three of which I've lived at during um, my work at Index Coop. It's crazy how accommodating, like, the Web3, um, I, I honestly think crypto is a whole space, and then definitely DAOs. Um, are we have index group has contributors in um, all well all six continents besides uh, Antarctica right um, <laughs> and so many time zones it's it's shocking how people just are willing to make things work as they're not in a traditional company um, so yeah I love the flexibility especially of locations I feel like DAOs are the optimal workplace for somebody who's self disciplined. Um, and they're also the optimal workplace for somebody who just lives a um, undisciplined life, if that makes some degree of sense. Um, I never know where I'm going to be next. And I cannot imagine uh, doing that with a regular job. Um, and then let's see if I had to pick a least favorite part of kind of Dow's crypto space. Um, I think I'll build on what I said earlier um about the the lack of clear expectations i think in some ways it goes with the territory right so crypto when you when you start working at crypto you know you don't have clear expectations of your salary or where things are going to go in crypto or people often tell me like oh you work in crypto you must be broke right now and it's like oh, god uh, <laughs> um but with that, I think comes like a really lack of clear expectations on how um, you should perform. Um, I think sometimes DAOs try to set themselves apart from regular companies too much um, to the point where there's, you know, we can talk about the scandals over time, like um, the Brantley um, from, you know, dot ETH um, situation. Like that is just something that wouldn't, he wouldn't be allowed to stay as a normal contributor to a normal company, right? Because there's HR and policies and all this. Um, and I think in DAO sometimes we let the flexibility go a bit too far because there's not these clearly defined expectations and rules and contracts. And if you say this, you get fired. Um, I think the crypto space could do with uh, some degree of, um, yeah, aforementioned expectations, especially in terms of like stuff regular companies value, um, like codes of conduct, um, DEI efforts. I um, think it's good that those conversations are happening on Twitter, but I really, really do think they, they're lacking in DAOs themselves. Love that. Um, yeah, I feel the same way. Like I was always, I was always like yeah. the wildest person at my, uh, corpo jobs, you know, and just like the one who's sort of the most willing to like do things differently and be 
unplanned and um, do things spontaneously and not, not, not working with three. Sometimes I feel like I'm the corpo, you know, I, <laughs> I'm well, like, all right, no, all right. No. Y'all's. <laughs> <laughs> like yeah, I'm gonna, uh, <laughs> I'm gonna, um, we're, we're we're gonna we're gonna do this in an organized way, okay? <laughs> um, no, it, it hurts when you start being like, "Did you read my email?" And people are like, "What's email?" You know, and it's like, "Oh god, yeah. <laughs> what am I saying?" Yeah, exactly. <laughs> They're like, "Just just at me on Twitter." It's like, "Nah, dog." Like I I sent you I sent you a message. Uh, you, you should read it. Um, <laughs> I sent you a message. <laughs> yeah. So. Um, so I feel you on that. And, and also like your point about codes of conduct, um, slash like, um, maybe raising the expectations a little bit in terms of professionalism, like on some level, um, it's kind of two sides of the same coin, but, but I, that second part r- really resonates with me as well. I was listening to, um, Dennison, who's Tali's CEO, um, interview mm-hmm. with, uh, Diana Chen, who does the Rehash podcast, and they were talking about this. Um, Dennison started a DAO called Pride Punks, which is focused on like, um, it, it, it's like a very, very early crypto punks derivative, focused on um, DEI basically in the crypto space. And um, they had some people join the DAO who mm. were not down with that mission, basically. Um, and what said in. a lot of like very hurtful things uh, to, to like the community and the discord. Yeah. And then they had this like very deep conversation as a community of like, well, a lot of these people, a lot of people are here. Like they appreciate crypto's values of censorship resistance and, um, you know, permissionlessness, but also mm. like, this is not like the ability participating in this community, which, which like most of the community feels is sure to be sort of focused on like inclusivity in the web three space is not mm. the equivalent of the ability to submit a transaction on the, like at the, at the base protocol level in the Ethereum chain, right? Like, like the, the yes. chain can be permissionless and censorship resistant, but every single community and application that is built on top of Ethereum does not need to be like, completely censorship resistant and open and that that's kind of like where they landed as a community and they, they developed a code of conduct around like hate speech and stuff like that um which which i think is i, I think is right like um and, and, but, but but the but the key point there is like you don't the you, you can form a community on top of ethereum to do anything you want right like if you if you want to right. form a community <laughs> where like everyone really loves hate speech um you can do that i personally wouldn't want to be a part of that um, and wouldn't encourage anyone to do that. But like you do have the ability to do that and then you can make a DAO treasury and submit your transaction on Ethereum and Ethereum will not censor the transactions. Right. Mm. Um, But that doesn't mean that if a different community forms that like is trying to focus on inclusivity, that you get to just roll up in there and do whatever you want because it's part of crypto. Right. I agree. Um, Yeah. and so like the actual mechanics of crypto, but not so much the, you know, theoretical philosophy, like there's no reason it has to be. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So, um, so anyway, like, um, that really resonates with me, I think. Yeah. But both of the things you said, like, I didn't, I didn't respond specifically to the point about like compensation, but I think that is essential, <laughs> like increasing sort of like saying? the, yeah, like the, 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 I guess professionalism or like the ability to have solid expectations around compensation and benefits and things like that. Mm -hmm. Um, but also like, yeah, this idea of a code of conduct, um, and like there's not HR departments and stuff in DAOs, but like, you know, or, or at least in most DAOs, but like, you know, I think it's essential that our communities like develop clear expectations about like what, why the community exists, what is and isn't acceptable in that particular community, um, and that people feel safe, right? Like being a part of, yeah, being a part of DAOs that we create. Yeah, I think um, we've worked hard on like our mission, vision, values um, in a like in a financial sort of sense and like a business goal strategy sense. Um, but I think there's definitely long to go in the what's your what's your mission vision in terms of like who, who's a contributor at this DAO, you know, what do you actually want to do, uh, with your work? 
Absolutely. So the last question is um, based on, yeah, our conversation going to be a hard, maybe a hard one for you to answer. So it sounds like you're a bit of a nomad, but uh, (laughs) (laughs) what is your favorite place in the world and why? Oh, a fun one. Okay. This is not too technical. Um, Okay. I actually have it because I have such a specific um, answer for that. Um, So my favorite place in the world is um, this hill in edinburgh and i will pass that along like no other like i it's not something i want to gatekeep everybody deserves to sit on this hill and have a moment of introspection um so if anyone's listening out there and ever makes their way to edinburgh in scotland um i went to uni there uh for my master's and this hill i swear changed my life um in in the least dramatic sense um it's a hill, uh, it's in Grass Market next to Cold Town House. Um, I think in some sort of sense, it's like watching a watching a movie um, or it's sort of lurking in a discord, you know, where you see what's going on and you're there, but you're sort of invisible. Um, it views like this whole uh, like beautiful town square with the old architecture and all. It's right under the castle. Um but it's also really quiet. Um, so it's like a moment of solitude without being alone, if that makes sense, which I also feel like it's a lot of people's uh, motivation for being in crypto. Um, I think <laughs> not to bring it back to this too much, but like, that's how I feel with uh, like my colleagues. Um, I feel like they're like great friends and I feel so close to them, but we've also never met, you know, um, same with this hill. Like you can really view, uh, everything that's going on in this super busy city center um, without having to actually interact with it yourself. (laughs) And that's really beautiful. You know, it's good for meditation. Um, It's also good for drinking, like coming back from the club Um, and the place that can do both of those things is my kind of place. (laughs) It sounds, yeah, it sounds like a really special place. Um, I've, I have been to some like very out, there are places in the world, but I've never been to Europe, um, weirdly. What? And, uh, yeah, yeah, I know. Um, it's partially cause I like to do like outdoor adventures yeah. and, um, exotic. yeah, fair. do like exotic things, but, um, but I'm about to have, a, a child and I feel like that's like the perfect opportunity to be like, okay, we're going to like go and tour Europe mm-hmm. and I'm trying to decide where to go. I feel like I need to ask you more about this, but like Scotland, dude, I, I keep seeing so many good things. Um, it's such a beautiful place. Like, uh, it, it seems Edinburgh's like voted you know, best city in the world. This, um, this, this year, it's crazy. It, it, it really is. Seriously. We'll talk. Um, you know, I've liked Vienna too, from the six hours I've been here as well. <laughs> <laughs> That's another shit, isn't it? <laughs> um, that's awesome. Yeah, um, dude, at all the pictures of the countryside and like these crazy like rock towers and everything's so green. I live in the desert, so like this idea of this like the wetness is very appealing to me in terms of contrast. So yeah, yeah. Very yeah. I'm from Southern California, you know, we're fighting the like almond farmers for water usage and here Yeah. It rains too much. It rains too much, you know. I wish we could exactly. <laughs> exactly. Well, can't wait to get more more uh, inside takes from you on Scotland before I go there. Um, yeah, really appreciate your time, cool horse girl. Thanks so much for like you know really starting to get involved in what we're doing with content at Tally and the Content Guild. Um, cool horse girl is an expert Twitter Spaces host, so you, you know if you ever need some There's... advice on Twitter Spaces, <laughs> you can always hit her up on that. Um, you catch her on the next next tw- tally twitter spaces um which will be soon tm and uh yeah um th- th- yeah. thanks so much great spending some time with you